morning to you, Julie. Such a major development here. Dan Howard, the ex-Idaho State Police officer accused of murdering his wife, He's behind bars this morning. He was arrested late Friday night at the Spokane, Washington International Airport. He had been out on bond, and as conditions of his bond, he was not allowed to be within two miles of the Spokane Airport. Additionally, he was reportedly required to wear an ankle monitor. Now, it, it really is unclear as to why he was at the airport, but we can obviously guess. Airport police did take him into custody just after 10.30 p.m. Friday night. They booked him into the Spokane County Jail. He was then extradited to Kootenay County in Idaho and booked into that jail where his trial is expected to resume this morning. But obviously, as you just said, Julie, we've been covering this trial here at Court TV. It began just about two weeks ago. He's facing first degree murder and felony domestic battery charges. Prosecutors say that he killed his wife. Kendi Howard in February of 2021 by asphyxiation and then placed her in the bathtub and shot her to make it look like a suicide. Prosecutors say that Howard killed his wife to avoid splitting an estimated $2 million in combined assets amid an impending divorce. Now, he was arrested on the murder charge in April of 2023. He had been out of police custody since December of 2023. He was out on a property bond, but now He's back behind bars after being arrested at the airport. And of course, Julie will be following this story and bring you all the latest developments as they become oh, available. I know you will, Kelly. This is really going to be something because after he's brought back, they're going to address this big issue, as you know. So it's not like they're going to get right back to the trial. Yikes. Kelly Kraft, always great to have you in the studio. Thank you so much. We'll see you at 10 a.m. And Dan Howard, this guy, we got to talk about him because he's been proclaiming his innocence from the beginning. Take a look. All right, so now we've got an absconding attempt with Dan Howard. If I'm a prosecutor, I am salivating with this new information. I'm going to try to use it against him. So let's talk about that now. I have two great guests standing by. I have... Uh, a former supervisor with the Department of Homeland Security, Dr. Jason Piccolo with us, and board certified forensic pathologist, Dr. Priya Banerjee. Good morning to you both. Good Dr. Morning. Jason, let me start with you, please. Uh, the flight, let's talk about this. Uh, tell me in your opinion what this guy has just done to his case. I'm sorry, were you talking to me? Yes, yes, Dr. Jason. Uh, yeah, I missed that. I heard a doctor. Hey, you yeah, know I've what? got two what doctors. I've got the MD and the PhD. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, yeah. No, what he, was, what he did was he did the biggest no-no. Listen, you're going to try to abscond. You have an ankle monitor. They're going to be tracking you. You're going to have some sort of evidentiary value of you with a ticket, with you payment, with you making that furtive gesture to leave the country or to leave the area. Now... You know, thinking about a fugitive aspect, the northern border is right there. So I don't know why he didn't try to do a land crossing if he was going to try to abscond. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is just uh, not smart stuff. And this guy, this is what kills me, Dr. Jason. This guy knows this. He worked in law enforcement. He knows. And if you have a state, like the state I practiced in, so I'm licensed in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, prosecutors can get a jury instruction to show flight as consciousness of guilt. So if you're the prosecutor, Monday morning, you're going to be in front of the judge. Judge, this is what he did over the weekend. Not only, you know, he's going to have a bond violation hearing for violating the conditions of his bond, that Kelly Kraft was just telling us about, but then uh, he's going to be facing potentially the prosecutor using this against him. Uh, so this guy, he is in much worse trouble than he was before now, that's for sure. Uh, and so let's talk about the trouble that he's in with the initial charging. Was this a homicide like prosecutors say? Uh, Dr. Priya Banerjee, I want to go to you on this one. I've got two clips I want to show you, please, because as you know, what's at issue is whether this was a suicide or was it a homicide? And so we're going to play two clips. One doctor saying that the manner of death is undetermined. Another doctor, uh, Dr. William Smock, who I'm sure you'll recognize, he's been in many high-profile cases, the Derek Chauvin murder case, uh, saying very clearly this was a homicide. 
when you were first called out to the scene, were you called out for a possible suicide? Yes. Did the coroner's office ever make a manner of death determination? Yes. What was the determination at that point in time? It was marked as an undetermined at that time. In this case, the bullet has a downward wound path. The literature says, one, you have to have the gun. If you're suiciding, it needs to be in a comfortable position to, if you're going to shoot yourself. Uh, but those individuals that do that, based on the literature and the research, those go up. The homicides, the bullet trajectory, the wound path is down. Okay, uh, Dr. Priya Banerjee, uh, listening to just what Dr. Smock said, let's start there first. Is that true, what he said about the trajectory? Generally, that's very accurate, because if you think about someone trying to shoot themselves, it's, it's into the brain, it's just naturally the direction, it's human nature, you know, and a multiple, numerous uh, suicides I've seen like that, it's always upward, and it's very questionable when you have a downward trajectory and looking at the x-ray and his testimony i agree with him this is very unusual and suspicious to be undetermined i think it's very consistent with a homicide Mm -hmm. I appreciate that, Dr. Banerjee. And another question for you, please. We know the medical examiner who was working for the county at the time, who's now since retired, Dr. John Howard, came to the conclusion, conclusion that the manner of death was undetermined. How common is that for a medical examiner to say, I just cannot, based on the evidence, come to a conclusive determination of the way in which uh, this death occurred? Sure, and I'm not in his shoes, but I use it rarely. You know, it's there when you really can't figure it out. But I think you have to put the context, you know, everything into context, the trajectory. She had wounds on her hands, other bruises from what I've gleaned from the testimony that others have given. All these just don't make sense in a clean cut suicide. So I think, you know, that's where my opinion would differ and more parallel Dr. Smocks, you know, do I use undetermined? Yes. But in this case, I just, I don't see how suicide is high on the list, really. I think it's all staged. Mm -hmm. It looks staged to you, huh, Dr. Priya? That's what the prosecutors yes. are saying yes. here. Uh, boy, I really appreciate you weighing in on this one. And uh, we'll see what the jury decides. Uh, remember, we're still in the middle of this case, folks, as this defendant has tried to abscond.